Uh, thank you very much, Jim, for the kind words. And also a great thank you to Andre and John for inviting us to come here and tell a little about what we have done in a small hospital in Sweden. First of all, I would like to say a couple of facts about the hospital. It's St. Clarence Hospital in Stockholm. It's regarded as a quite a small hospital. We have uh, an emergency room and an ICU unit of six uh, beds. And we do about 10,000 cases per year, whereof half of it is in uh, general anesthetic. Uh, we employ about 25 doctors and 50 CRNA. I'm a CRNA by profession. And uh, we are going to tell the story on how we implemented the standard for inhalation anesthesia. Taking a look on the status at 2009, it was like this. We consider ourselves to be a low flow department because in Sweden low flow has been preached since uh, early 80s and so on. But we found also that the meaning of low flow was very different between people, as you can see, range from maintenance flow of 0.5 to 15 liters, uh, one and a half liter. Uh, no standard was set apart from that Severane was the only available anesthetic agent. Um, and another thing was that nitrous oxide was steadily decreasing in use, and uh, we um, decided to stop all use of it the next year, to 2010. There were several reasons for that. One was that the City Council of Stockholm uh, told us if we would uh, go on with nitrous oxide, we had to have a destruction plant of the uh, nitrous oxide coming out from our scavengers. Uh, the second reason was that we found out that 50% of all delivered nitrous oxide to the hospital went out on the pipelines, leaking from the pipelines before reaching our machines. We couldn't find it, actually. It was in, uh, non, longer, non longer in use pipelines, actually, but no one did know about that they was not cut off. So that's the story about that. Um, the knowledge of gas kinetics and gas composition in the circuit was generally superficial and not applied. So, we put to, together a couple of goals for our project. We would like to take control by increased knowledge, and by having that control, we could uh, provide our patients with an uh, adequate anesthesia, meaning the right concentration in the right time, Avoid overdose. Yes, overdose is mainly when the increase in anesthetic agent goes unnecessarily fast in the beginning, causing a blood pressure drop. Not rarely seen. So that we would like to do something. Uh, we would like to make our task easier. Less need for adjustments. All the railing on the vaporizer and fresh cash flow, minimize that in, in order to get our hands on other stuff that was more, more important. Optimize the use of anesthetic agent for environment and for economy. To set the standard in our department that all medical doctors and CRNA would accept to follow. Do you think that's an easy task? No. <laughs> we didn't do that either. <laughs> So, going back in literature, looking on what was said about CCA, start with the beginning of 1924 when Ralph Waters, <coughs> and what did he say? Yeah, he was talking under the headlines for economy, convenience, welfare of patients. That seems to uh, go along quite good with our goals. Uh, interesting is, although, that under convenience, Ralph Waters talking environment, meaning the OR, less explosive and less odor. While we're talking environment, we have a more global <laughs> thought about that. So, now we know everything, almost. Eighty years later, another famous person told us this. Most, the semi closed systems are most complicated, <coughs> less predictable. And I Without having any, any statistics to back me up, I would say that of the, all the world's anesthesia providers, this is their daily routine to be in the semi-closed uh, semi 
circuit working there. Uh, so, as you can see, reading behind the lines, we were heading to closed circuit anesthesia, or as close as to close we could get. Looking on our prerequisites for doing this, we found that the monitoring was adequate, including entire A and aesthetic agent. We have leak-free machines available. Ascending bellows ventilator available. Now I will hear some protests from the industry, of course. Uh, but yes, you are right. It, uh, it's okay to do it with any other ventilator too. But for m my own sake, I will say that the ascending bellows ventilator gives me a very good physical possibility during teaching CCA, knowing that if you increase the lung volume with PEEP or something, <coughs> you can see directly the response in the bellows ventilator. So it has some pedagogical advantages, advantages that I still believe is good to have, not necessary. All. Stop using nitrous oxide, yes. You know, everybody is aware of the dramatic first five minutes of uptake of nitrous oxide. And could we avoid, avoid that? That will minimize our need for adjustments. Uh, and the ability of having or having an anesthetic with low solubility is of course also important so you can have a good quality of the returning gas so you can keep the concentration in spite up enough. Good teaching tools. We didn't have that. And search the internet as Jim told us. We found Gasman and Gasman turned out to be a real cornerstone for us, for our job. And the sixth will tell a bit more about that later on. Uh, the net flow calculus was also a good way to, to present what would happen in different settings. So I, together with Jim Philip, made a small Excel uh, application where you can elaborate a little with different settings to see what, what, what will be the end point of inspired oxygen. You can do this the hard way, the closed circuit, of course. You can do it with injection, <coughs> manual injection, like here. This is my vaporizer that I have invented myself. Uh, and you can do it by being guided by Harry Lowe's square root of time model. Or maybe you can sheet a little so you take your monitor and see what happens when you will inject. Or you can do it the lean way. Please, Sixten, floor is yours. <coughs> yes, the lean way is not the easy way, though. Um, as Stella said here, we wanted to Im imply a standard anesthesia target control. And to get, it's quite easy to know what you want to do. The problem is to get the users to know what they shall do. So it's a lot of, we had a lot of thinking, how are we going to imply this? We wanted to, it to be used in the whole department to start with. We have 13 operating theaters and about 60 nurses and 25 doctors that we wanted to understand how this works. So first of all, we, we try to sit down and really to plan the introduction of low flow or metabolic flow. And um, without Gasman, I can say, we wouldn't have succeeded. We used Gasman as a teaching tool. We made all our pictures and everything, all illustrating material from Gasman, and we used it in, in study circles together with the nurses and doctors, so they could play with it themselves and see what happened if they did wrong. Then we did some, just to be able to rely that this was good, so we did it on, put in some data from real patients, and it was a very good correlation, so we felt quite reassured that Gasman is a good tool for this. 
And then we started the lectures, the nursing institutes and the doctors. And we wanted to, first of all, to create a knowledge about the method and also to, to give them something of a pioneer spirit to make them proud to learn something new that nobody else used at that time. And we often heard that they said that when they met other anesthetists or nurses, and they said that we are doing this at St. Gurren's Hospital. Of course, we made written routines, and uh, we also always we had we had uh, theater practice with everybody, and we were always at hand to help out. We never told anybody that you cannot use your old method, but we want you to use a new method, and we will be there to back you up. And then we had repeated lectures and constant follow-up, and so on and so forth. <coughs> Of course, there is uh, some new colleagues coming, both doctors and nurses, and uh, they were taught individually. And then we thought of publishing what we were doing, so we decided to publish it locally first to give ourselves a platform from where we could increase the knowledge all over Sweden to start with. And uh, of course, there was a rumor going around that we did something. So other hospitals or departments of anesthesia, they asked us to come and tell them about our method, which is not new. I mean, it's a very old method, but it's new. Nobody used it before. And the problem, of course, as always, especially with doctors, is that they are very suspicious about new things. And they have all sorts of uh, but and this is dangerous and it's not possible to do it in this way and there is a well you know how much they can come up with if they just want to not do anything or something but uh, eventually everybody had to follow because more and more people knew how to do it and if you didn't understand and if you didn't knew you were so you were out you were considered to be old-fashioned so that was good for us and also the nursing schools for example they they told <coughs> the nurses that went there that this is a dangerous method you shouldn't do and use and it doesn't work and so on and the, some nurses didn't even pass the exam almost because they didn't want to approve them when they had when they they told about this method so then I just want to, to say that that it takes a lot of endurance a lot of stubbornness to introduce a new method. It, doesn't just, it isn't just enough to have a lecture and then you think people are going to go home and do what you tell them. So you have to inspire people to try to do things in real life, but they won't do that unless you are there to show them and show that it is easy and possible and they, that, as we did, make people proud to do something new. And we used nudging. You know the concept of nudging. Make it easy to do right and make it difficult to do wrong. And that was what we did. We tried to make it awkward to do the old way and easy to do the right way. So, how is the <coughs> our method then? You can use it in any machine and it's quite easy. Once you've done like three anesthetics with this method, you don't, you don't want to do any other method. I can assure you that. <coughs> of course, you pre-oxygenate uh, in a normal way. It's always an IV induction. If you, that's what we mostly do and establish an airway. And the introduction then of the anesthetic is with a fresh gas flow of about 0.5 liters per minute. And you put the vaporizer dial on 8%. And then you wait, depending on your target, you, where you want to 
end up. You can, if you wait five, five to eight minutes with this, you can expect about two percent, up to two point five percent of zero rain in tidal. And when you have reached your target, you reduce the fresh gas flow to 0.2 liters and keep the vaporizer dial on 8%. Then you feed the circuit with like 16 milliliters of vaporized sea rain. And that's enough to, for the patient to be constant, in a constant anesthetic depth from where we started to, to reduce the flow. And then because you are taken up, the patient takes up the uh, rain in the mostly in the muscle. The venous return to the lungs increases and increases, then you have to reduce the exogenous uh, rain. So you reduce, we, usually we reduce it by 1% each hour to keep the entire constant. And that's the way we do. It's very simple. And when you wake the patient up, you just wash out if you want to with minute volume, <coughs> with the vaporizer of zero, of course, or you can uh, coast, which means that you just turn off the vaporizer, keep the uh, fresh gas flow of 200 milliliters of pure oxygen, then. and then it takes about 10 to 12 minutes before the patient comes down to <coughs> Mac awake. Or if you have had the patient for more longer anesthetic, it takes longer time to, to coast. So it's pretty simple. And um, I didn't say that, but we start with the uh, with, uh, air to start with after the pre-oxygenation. The FiO2 is rather high, so if you start with 0.5 liters of air, the FiO2 will, will decrease. And then you, when you go over to 0.2 liters, then you continue with air until you reach your, uh, the, the, the um, amount of air that you want. Usually we put it on 0.35 to 0.40 FiO2. And if you, during the anesthetic, you, or anesthesia, you want to reduce the, the depth of anesthesia, you just put, take, turn off the silver rain vaporizer, keep the fresh gas flow it is, as it is, until you reach a new target, and then you restart the silver rain on a slightly lower level, like 1% lower than you had before. And you don't need to change the, the fresh gas flow unless you have a, are in a hurry. And if, if you need to increase the, the entitled sea rain, then you always, first you put the sea rain vaporizer on 8% and you can increase fresh gas flow to 0.5 liters or maybe to 1 liter. <coughs> then it goes very fast to get the patient on a, on a deeper level of anesthetic. So that's basically what it, it's all about. And uh, in our department, everybody does this. I mean, Jan was there, to, you, we went around. It's amazing that and you everybody the used the method. And it, if you go around in other hospitals today in Stockholm, most of the th departments use this method. And we've been also around in, in Sweden to implement the, the method uh, there. We did a staff survey to see what they thought about this new method. It was three years after the introduction. And basically over 90% around, they thought it was easy to learn and use. It was easy to control anesthesia. The patients were more cardiovascular stable. They thought that it was a better quality for the patient, and they felt satisfaction not to pollute the environment. And also the hospital administrators thought that this was a good idea, because we went down in CIVO, number of bottles of Sivorane or Desperin equivalents from 345 to 150. It was a 55 percent reduction. It started already at the beginning, and then it continued for, for 
it's seven years here, I think. And we are still at that low level. It's, pos it's not possible to go down further because we have the average length of our operations are around one hour, and you need the 0.5 liters to start with for it, maybe five to 10 minutes. And if you have longer procedures, you can save much more. And this was the politicians in Stockholm even <laughs> noticed that we were doing something for the environment. So Stella and I got the Stockholm City Council Environmental Award in 19, 2014. A little sum of money and we were acknowledged at the City Council. So, and this is mostly Stellan's, Stellan is the one who invented or, the, or invented, who reinvented the method. I was just a tool for him to, to reach the goal that he wanted. So I'm very happy that you came to me and said that uh, you wanted to do this. I couldn't have done it without you. No, I know that. <laughs> <laughs>